Mike, tell me about being a state representative. So it's uh, it's it's kind of a thankless job. Uh, you you have to have the interest of your constituents first and forefront in your mind, and you come down and you get your your brain stretched to, to deal with issues that you never knew anything about, never honestly wanted to know anything about, but uh, but yet you're put in a position where you have to make decisions on issues that you never uh, thought you'd grapple with before, and, and, and that is actually rewarding in, in that challenge. Do you have to do a lot of research before you make decisions on things you don't know much about? Well, you know, the process itself, it's really hard to get a bill passed, so the process is itself uh, forces you to have to uh, learn about the issues. So you have people that will come and they'll, they'll tell you what they want you to know and you'll hear both sides of it and you get smart on it. Um, you know, there are so many issues that come through, you, it, it's impossible for any one legislator to be smart on all of the, what in this session will be 600 bills that come through. Um, so you get good at the ones that go through your committee and that you have in-depth research on. Um, but it, it, you know, the, for me, that's the rewarding part, is that it's really expanded my breadth of knowledge on, on issues and also things that I never would have known anything about before. Who are the people on these committees? So, so the committees are made up of fellow representatives, um, but then it's people that have, and, uh, have a stake in what you're dealing with. Uh, so folks, folks that, that care about that particular issue for one reason or another, uh, they'll come and they, they hear it's coming and they'll testify about it and, and, uh, and, and let you know what, what they think you need to know about that issue. So uh, that's a broad-based bunch of people uh, and quite honestly I'm not sure how they find out to, to show up but, but they're there and, and we get their voices get heard. Do you have people in your own office who do research or is it all this conversation? Uh, yeah, um, you know, on, on some bills I've been working on lately, it's forced me to do research on, on issues that I, you know, in my regular life would not have any, uh, you know, idea to go research this. Um, so when the when a bill comes up that needs research, I'll do it. Um, we don't have a, we, we don't have staff. I've got one staff. I get the, every legislator gets one aide, and so you'll send that aide out to find out information, but. Um, or interns or people that want to be involved in the process volunteer basically to help me out in, in figuring out different issues that I don't in, inherently know about. This is an elected position, right? Correct. Do you try to find out what your constituents are interested in before you make the decision? Absolutely. Um, any issue that comes from constituents you know, rises to the top of the pile. Uh, my email and text get filled up daily about uh, particular bills and, and issues they may they may have with it, and and they become the expert to me. Uh, if it's something I don't know a lot about, um, I can hear different viewpoints, you know, pretty easily. They'll let me know uh, how they would like for me to vote on particular issues. Do they give you a lot of information, like detailed information? Like, do they send you files and articles and things? Yeah. Do Some do. Oh, so yeah, they're helping you with the research. You bet. You yeah. bet. Yeah. And you yeah. appreciate that. I, most certainly. So most anybody certainly. who has information they could send to you, you'd like to have it. You bet. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah. I like that approach. <laughs> right. Right. It's great. So, so it, and and it has expanded my mind on things where I may go into it personally, as a, you know, private citizen, business business owner, didn't care about some particular social issue, um, because it doesn't impact me personally. Uh, I, I get drawn into those conversations from people in a, that, that will tell me, hey, this is important. They tell me why, uh, send me the research on it, and, and, and I look at it and go, oh my gosh, I didn't know that was important. So, Are you from the area that you represent right now? I am. Yep. Yep. I'm a, I'm a native of the state. So, What did you do in that area before you did this? Yeah. So I actually am a small business owner. I am a foundryman. I have a foundry, and so I, I cast metal goods. So I'm... I am probably one of the few people in the building behind us that actually manufacture something uh, from raw metal to finished product, uh, which gives me a, you know, a different perspective on how business should work and how we should deal with commodities and, and, and things coming into the state and leaving the state. So, uh, you saw, I'm a, I'm a business guy uh, at heart. Got it. What exactly do you guys make? So. Uh, primarily, we make belt buckles. So oh. I'm a 
I am a belt buckle maker. Are you wearing one of your belt buckles right uh, now? Of course. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and and as I think everybody else should yeah. as well. Right. Are they, yeah. Right. We should have one right now. Right. Do, do they say anything specific on them, like Wrangler? Like, do you do Levi's belt buckles or? Uh, no. So, uh, my primary customer is the federal government. Oh. So, if you've ever seen a forest ranger with a belt buckle, uh, we made it. Wow. Like literally. Uh, uh, yeah. That's. Uh, that's my biggest customer, but we do tons of stuff for uh, different industries, people that, that that believe that you know buckles are crucial or it's or it's almost a marketing thing. Um, and then you know we actually you can't find my buckles in stores. You have to contact us and we make them uh, custom. So we're a custom buckle maker that's been around for 45 years and two generations. So oh, you you, you got this from your parents? I did. Wow. Yeah. So what? You're doing this job. It sounds like a fun job. What made you want to get into politics then? Uh, you know, uh, I spent time in the military, uh, and and for lack of satisfaction for what we were doing as a military in the '90s, I got out. Uh, but but I raised my hand and I obligated to 20 years. I didn't quite serve that, and I, I feel that I'm fulfilling the rest of my time. Uh, to service to the nation by by being here, uh, and and through my time in the military, I, I kind of got involved in in in, in politics, and uh, I, I've served in the U.S. Senate and the U.S. Uh, House of Representatives as a as an intern, and um, so it's always kind of been in my blood to, to do this a little bit, um, but also you know I, I'm unhappy with the discourse we, we're seeing and the lack of lack of communication between the two sides uh, which doesn't do doesn't do us any good and what I would like to see is more more conversation between uh, between the two opposite ends of the spectrum because at the end of the day uh, we've got to come up with solutions that really help help the, the, the average Joe citizen doesn't really care about this uh, they want to see their government do something that's productive in their life, uh, regardless of which party you're from or what exactly you believe. Um, and I try not to bring what I truly believe here. I understand and am and, and, and all about compromising on what the other folks believe and, it, and understand that a solution that nobody likes is actually probably the best solution. What's your, what's your method for finding compromise? Like you don't want to give up what you believe and what you think you should do and yeah. you're trying to compromise with the other person. Like how do you go about that? Yeah. Um, this is a strange strategy, but you know what? I I truly love and respect the people I work with, no matter where they're at on their ideology. I know that sounds kind of weird, but 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 we have allowed this process to make us get to the visceral emotion of actually hating the other person, and that that is not acceptable. So, regardless of where people are at on their ideology, I. I understand them, and, and quite frankly, I, I love them as a human. Uh, we will disagree, but if we if we allow this process to actually take us to the point where we are able to hate somebody because of their political belief, um, you know, shame on us for doing that. You know, we um, we we've got to respect uh, each other first, and. And say, you know what, your values and your views are way different than mine, but I respect you as a human. I respect you as a person that believes what they believe as deeply as the things I believe, but we've still got to talk. And if we quit talking, uh, things go bad. You use the word love. Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming you didn't use that word frivolously. Do you really no. love the people that you disagree I really do. with? I really do. I, you know, you can cast aside all of the their beliefs and, and look at them as a human and say, you know, I, I, your life experiences are way different than mine. Uh, I can't relate to that, but it doesn't make me dislike you because we have some differences in, in what we've been through. At the end of the day, we're still part of the human race and, and we've, we've, got to, we, we've got to figure this out. What do you see as the future for this? How does it move forward? Um, well, well, I don't know. Uh, got to get more lovers in there <laughs> for sure. Uh, no, I think, you know, 
America is resilient, and and we'll 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 come out of this. Uh, it's a it's a combination. It's kind of the perfect storm of 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 folks really going to their corners, and and I think at the end of the day, the humanity will come out, and people will discover that hey, I've let this process degrade me to somebody that can't love somebody that is not doesn't agree with everything I say. It is not, not on my side. Um, so I, I've got faith in humanity that, that, that we'll come through this because inertly as humans, we know this is wrong for us to hold this animosity for reasons that aren't really, at the end of the day, impactful 